Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cher. Today I'm going to show you how I made these adorable little labels for our hot chocolate bombs using my Cricut machine. I'm going to show you how easy these are to make using Cricut's print then cut feature. So let's get started. So first of all, we just need to go into our Cricut Design Space app and open that up. So this is what it looks like, and I'm using my iPad. So if you're using a laptop or a computer, your design space is gonna look a little different. Um, the iPad is a little bit limiting as far as some of the functions go, um, but I like to use the iPad and I haven't had a problem with it so far, so this is just how I like to do things. So the first thing you really need to do is just go onto Google and find yourself some images. I mean, all I did was just type in cute Valentine pictures or clip art, and then I just saved them right to my album here on my iPad. So I'm just gonna go ahead, all you need to do to, to retrieve those is hit this little upload button right here on the bottom. And it gives you an option from where you want to um, pick your images from. And I'm going to go ahead and select it from my photo library. So I have a folder that I've already put some really cute images that I found, like I say, just on Google. So now what we need to do is upload these into Cricut Design Space. So I think I'm going to choose this adorable little snowman here first. And right now it's coming to the spot where it wants me to clean up the image. So before we can use it in Cricut Design Space, we need to do that. So to do that, all you need to do is come down here and hit this little remove button and hit anywhere in the white area and see how that's totally cleaned up my little image here. And I think we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And yeah, I like the way that looks. So I'm going to hit next here again. And it's asking me to save the image. Now, before I do that, though, I want to make sure that I've got right now it's on the cut image. See the little check mark here? I want to make it a print and cut. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and name this. I'll just put snowman here. You can name it whatever you would like and then just hit done. So that cute little snowman automatically just saved into the images that I've already uploaded and cleaned the way I just showed you. So now all I need to do is just go ahead and select my little snowman, which if you look down here in the corner, it's come up right down here and I'll just hit the insert button. And now it has brought that right into Cricut Design Space for me. So now I can move this little guy around. I can do whatever I want with it. Now I'm going to be making round labels today and I already know that I want them to be two inches. So what I'm going to do first of all, before I do anything else, is I'm going to go down here to the little shape button. I'm going to hit that and it brings up all these shapes for you. So you could do hearts, you could do stars, whatever you like, but I want to do circles. So I'm just going to hit the circle. And I'm going to just select it and then I'm going to go edit. I'm going to change the color to white just because it makes it a lot easier to see what I'm doing that way. And I'll just hit apply. And I already know that I want this to be two inches. So I can just change my dimensions right there to two inches. So it's giving me a two by two circle. And then I can, again, I can move this however big I want and I can just use my fingers to go like this to make the area bigger. Now I wanna put my little snowman, which I can adjust the size here, however I like, just by doing that. Now, if I wanna put this on top of my circle, notice how it doesn't, doesn't work when I do that. First of all, I need to make this little snowman come to the front. So to do that, I hit this little arrange button and send it to the front. Now, when I move my little snowman over, he's sitting on top of the circle, but you notice that he's still a little bit too big. So I can just use that till I get the right size. And actually that's looking pretty good, but you'll notice that when I go to cut this, it's gonna be really close. So I'm gonna make him even a little bit smaller. So if I just go down here to, I just have to have it selected first. If I go to edit and I come right here to the width, and I can just kind of hit the minus button and that'll make my little snowman just a little bit smaller. And then I don't have to worry quite so much about getting it too close to the edges. And I think that's about perfect. So now what I want to do is I want to attach the circle and my snowman together. So I just hit up here and I kind of drag and that's going to select both of those things together. And then I'll come down here and I'm going to go actions and I'm going to hit the attach button. Now these two things are connected. But before I want to go any further, 
whenever you're doing cut and or print and cut, you always want to flatten your image. See how the little circle around there went away? But that's what you want. You want that to be flattened or it's not gonna work. <laughs> so if I wanted to just print out a whole bunch of this one image, all I have to do is just come down here and hit make it. And it will just plop it onto my, um, my board here and it'll show me exactly what's going to print out and that's how I get one image. Now the really super easy way of getting more than one on one piece of paper I've seen a lot of people just go back to the canvas and duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. You don't need to do that. All you have to do is just come up here where it says project copies and hit how many you want. And I know 12 will fit on a sheet. So I'm just going to hit in here 12 and hit done. So it will automatically just put them on that one sheet of paper for you. And I know that if I put 15 in here, it'll actually print it out. It won't all fit. It'll print it out onto two pieces of paper. So I've done this enough times to know that I can fit 12 on here. And we're basically ready to go. And it says right here, you'll know that you got it right when it says print and cut. Because like I said, you have to make sure that you do that, that step where you um, flatten it or it won't give you that option. It won't work. So now all we have to do is come down here and hit print. So you want to make sure your printer's on. And my printer is coming up here already. I want just one copy. And now here's where you can decide whether you want color, which I do, or you can have the option of doing it black and white. So everything looks good here. So the next thing I need to do is just go on over to my printer and load in a piece of cardstock. So this is the printer that we have. We did a lot of research when we were looking for a printer and we just got this not that long ago and I'm loving it. So it's the Canon and it's the G7020 um, model. And this is the one that you get to fill the ink with your, like all by yourself here, which is amazing. It's supposed to last a really long time, which like I've been printing a lot and I haven't even seen the levels go down at all. And it's way cheaper to refill these as opposed to getting you know the cartridges which is what we were really looking for we wanted something that would be a little bit more cost effective so so far I'm really loving this printer so i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to load my cardstock so with our printer we have to load it from the back so i'm just going to get that right in there and then it's going to be asking me if i want to use the rear which i do and letter and mat and i just hit Yes, so it is ready to go. So now all it's left to do is just hit print. And it's going to uh, send that over to my printer. And in a minute or so, I will have all my little labels printed out. So this is how it looks after it's all printed. You'll notice that it has this kind of a black border around it. And that is so that when I put it into my Cricut machine, it's going to know exactly where to make all the little circle cuts. It uses this to kind of uh, judge judge that. Now, before you ever do a print and cut, <laughs> use that feature, you need to make sure you calibrate your Cricut machine. And if I remember, I will put down a video that I followed. It was super easy to follow the steps to do that, but you definitely need to make sure you do that or otherwise your cuts aren't going to be perfect. Um, so yeah, you definitely need to do that first. So the next thing we need to do is to come back over here to Cricut Design Space. We've already printed, so now we can just hit the continue button. And now it's going to ask us um, what materials we're going to be cutting. Now I've already selected the dial on my Cricut machine to custom. So now I need to come down here and I'm going to uh, go to the all materials. And I'm going to scroll here till I come up to the card stock. And I've just been using this medium one. I've got, I think it's kind of like a medium card stock that I have. I have no idea what it is. I just had it in my stash. <laughs> so it is ready to go now. It's telling me that I need to have the fine point blade in my machine, which I already do. So now we're going to head on over here to the Cricut in just a second. But before we do that, we've got to get our paper loaded onto our blue lightweight mat or the light grip mat I should say. So this is the one you always use for paper and you just kind of line it up with the grid and kind of just give it a bit of a pat down to make sure it's on there. So let's head on over to the Cricut and we'll start cutting. So you'll notice that the little arrow light is flashing because it's telling me it's ready to load my mat and I just wanted to show you here that I have it on the custom um, setting here my little dial. So now all we need to do is just line up 
our mat, get that underneath those little white tabs. And then we're ready to hit this little flashing button. And then the next thing we're waiting for, there we go. The Cricut is now ready to go when you see that little light flashing. And it's gonna start to kind of figure out where it needs to cut. It kind of does a couple of passes here first. It's kind of doing its measurements and uh, then it'll start cutting. And pretty soon we'll have some really adorable little labels. And there we go. So now this little flashing light's telling me that it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. And then we can just take this right out of the Cricut. And look at that, you can see all the little round circles that it's cut. So let's go ahead and take these off the mat. So this will just peel right off this little mat here. And I just like to use this little tool that comes with the Cricut to just kind of pick them right off the mat here like this. And there we have an adorable little label. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? So let's say that you didn't want just snowman little labels. You wanted maybe two or three different kinds and you wanted them to all print out on the same paper. Well, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do that. So you can just go back over to your canvas. So here we have our original little snowman that we had used to design with before, and we can easily add more by just doing the exact same thing as we did before. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna go to upload. We're gonna go to my library. And this time I think I'm gonna use this adorable little owl image. So all we have to do again is just clean up our little image. And with this one, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more cleaning. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're just gonna make this a little bigger. And then I'm gonna select still the remove, but we're gonna make this area a little bit smaller. We're gonna drag it down. And then all you need to do is just tap on the inside of all of these little um, letters here. I'll show you when I do that. Look over here and you'll be able to see how, see how the inside of the P came out here. Let's do the L and I'll show you here again. So there's the L. So yeah, you need to do that with all of these letters. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, but you know what, it's worth it. If you can clean these images up enough to be able to use them, it's definitely worth it. So you just keep going until you've got everything looking really good. And the only thing I'm missing is the E over here and the A. So I'm just gonna drag this down. And I think that looks pretty good. So we'll just go here next. And that looks perfect. Everything looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next again. I wanna make sure that I select the print and cut. And then I'll just put here owl and done. And there we go. And it's brought it right up into my all images space here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And you'll notice that it's down here. So I can insert it and there we go. So I'm gonna do this exactly the same way. I'm gonna get another image again and I'm gonna clean it up the same way. And when I have three of them here, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to get them all to print on the same page. So now I have three images here that I'm all ready to make my labels with. I did them all exactly the same as I did the little snowman originally. So now all I need to do is just go down here and hit make it. And it's gonna bring me up to this page. So see, I've got all three of them here, but I wanna fill up the whole page. So all I have to do, this is the best part of this. All I have to do is just change this number and I'm gonna put four. And then that's going to give me four images on this sheet. There we go. 
Isn't that awesome? So there's no more, you know, copying and copying and copying and try to, you know, arrange them all on the paper. It does it for you. And I've seen so many people doing that and I don't understand why they don't just put the number of things they want right here. It is so simple. So hopefully if you get nothing else out of this video, you will at least learn this little trick to make this so much easier for yourselves. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna print this out exactly the same way as I did before. And when I come back, we'll be ready to cut it out on the Cricut again. So here's how our little image is printed out. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. Look at the owls. Oh my goodness. All right, so my Cricut is flashing. It's ready to insert the mat here. And so I'll just push the button. And here we go. So now I've got one of our little labels and you're probably thinking, well, if you're making hot chocolate bombs, you probably want to have the instructions on the back. And to do that, all I did was I actually just took some of this sticker paper. I found a pack of 10 at my local dollar store and more. I think this was like a dollar 25, you guys. It was super cheap. And then I also did find this one at Walmart. Now this was a lot more than $1.25. Again, you get 10 sheets. I think this was around four or $5, but this works really well. You can just print them onto your sticker paper the exact same way that I kind of showed you guys how to print the labels and cut them out. So you make your little circles just like I showed you before. And then basically all I do is it's got like the sticker paper on the back. You just peel that off. So here's a label that I've already made that I put the little sticker on the back with the instructions, which is very helpful for someone that's never had a hot chocolate bomb before. So I'm going to show you how adorable these are on the outside of our hot chocolate bombs. So I actually have some hot chocolate bombs here that we just recently made, Megan and I, and I do have a video uh, showing how we do make our hot chocolate bombs. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll make sure I put the link to that in the description box. I'll show you how we uh, package up our uh, hot chocolate bomb. We like to use these little cellophane bags. I get them at Dollar Tree. I think there's 20 in a package. And so yeah, we just put our little bombs right in here. makes it really easy to transport them as well and it just keeps them nice and clean and, and fresh looking. And then I just take a piece of Baker's Twine, comes on a roll like this. I've even seen this at Dollar Tree, they're selling Baker's Twine now. So we just tie this right on here. Cut a little bit of this top part off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use one of these adorable little labels that we made and I'm gonna put one of the little stickers with the instructions on the back. So you just peel the uh, backing paper off like so. And just make sure it's lined up here. So I'm just gonna make a little hole here with my hard hole punch right here at the top so that my Baker's Twine has something to go through. And then we'll just tie a simple little bow on here and these look so adorable so there it is all packaged up and ready to go and yeah they just look so stinking cute Megan and I have had so much fun making these and I can see us making these for all the holidays for sure so I hope you guys have enjoyed this little project share and until next time catch you on the next one bye for now everybody